Hello, um, I know you're probably wondering why I have um, cooked breakfast and why I'm drawing cooked breakfast. And the reason is, um, <clears throat> in my book, I've included these um, Scottish sausage meat patties. And obviously, I want them to look better than they are. Um, not just a lump of meat. So I've actually, what we've had for breakfast is poached egg tomatoes so that's what I'm going to be replicating because I won't be having any pictures in my book at, as in photographs it will mainly be paintings well it will, will, will only be paintings so each thing that I uh, do a recipe with will be having a accompanying photo and obviously this isn't a pretty pretty photo but it still has to look nice and resemble what I'm cooking so it's very very hard to see so far but there's the stem of the vine tomatoes, there's the um, poached egg and the Scottish uh, pate. <clears throat> and that's made, sorry about croaking, um, that's made from pretty much sausage meat, thyme, a red onion cut up, uh, white pepper and salt mixed together, a bit of flour on both sides and then you shape it. And then these have been cooked in the air fryer for about 12 minutes. So it actually gets rid of a lot of the fat, although it's still quite fatty. If you're on a keto diet, then this is perfect for you. Um, and obviously the better quality the sausage meat, the less uh, carbs it have in it. So this is the Waitrose um, sausage meat, which we bought before Christmas. I've just defrosted it yesterday. And it the pack, which contains... God, I can't see the amount on here. Anyway, uh, 700 grams cooks one, two, three, four big patties and a little tiny one. Anyway, so that's about that. And then I'm going to go on. I'm going to put my shadowing in around here. You can see where the shadows are. I'll start with that and then I'll build up and eventually have something that hopefully resembles what's on the plate. Okay, so here we go. Now I've made the pate um, a little bit bigger than it is because obviously I want it to be seen a bit more. And then I'm just going in with some shadow. This is what I say about artistic license because it's not a, a photo. So you can <clears throat> adjust it where you need to. So here we go. Um, obviously, you can see there's some shadow on the tomatoes. Here we go. Go around there. And obviously, the shadow falls wherever your light is. So I've currently got the lights obviously pointing this way. So the shadow's leaning like this. Here we go. And what this does, obviously, it's what's there. But it just gives it a little bit of <clears throat> reality, really. This is what you would see. This is, you know, you if you if it was just flat and you didn't have any shadowing on here, it wouldn't look right. So there we go. And the shadow that I've made um, is made up of Prussian blue and some black and some other bits that are on my very dirty paint plate. Let me show you. There we go. I know. But some of these colours make, you know, you sort of dip into them and they make some really nice uh, other colours. There we go. So I'm going to just go under here and that will just show that it's slightly raised, which it is. <clears throat> so I'm very croaky today. Got this sort of croaky lurgy that's going around. Um, there's a bit of shadow there. Where that tomato's against that one. A little. Ah, oh, now I need to rub that out because you can see I've overlapped there. Now in the creases of this tomato where it's been roasted, got some shadowing there. That's stage. 
stage one, I think. So now I need to find the colour for this, and that's not easy. Um, so I'm sort of going to go in with a mixture of yellow okra, raw sienna and burnt sienna um, and build up the colours. Now I've put some shadowing in here because you can see the shadow there which gives it its edge. And I'm going to start with yellow okra. So here we go. Now it won't look right initially, it looked too yellow, but you need like a bit of a base colour to start, so I'm going to go in here, there we go. Now when you're putting layers of colour on, really you need to let one dry, go around that tomato, <clears throat> now you can see it's not the right colour, but you can see bits of that colour showing through. So it would be a good base one. And then what it does with your shadows, it sort of makes them go to the background. Now if I show you, because obviously there's that sort of like more of a raw sienna. So if I show you, or burnt sienna should I say, if I put that on while it's wet, you can see you get this sort of stippling effect, but it, it's the right colour. Um, now, when, you, it's, when you're at this really wet stage, you can take it off with a piece of kitchen towel. Uh, if you think, oh no, I've made a massive boob here. Um, and the thing is, the hard thing to get with this sort of thing is getting a texture. So that's why I'm doing this like, because obviously you've got all the lumps and bumps of the meat and stuff. So this isn't going to be easy. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do, I'll let that dry and then I'll probably move on to the tomatoes. And I'll probably use a mixture of, look at my paints, they're not great, are they? Uh, I don't, can't even read that one. Crimson, crimson something. Uh, as, oh my God, Alizarin Crimson Hue. I don't know what this one says. Windsor Deep Red and mix them together because, and some orange, because obviously you can see there's quite a lot of orange in there. And the biggest thing is, the hardest thing, is getting that reflection in so they're not dead. And I really struggle with that. <clears throat> and it also, also you can see on the egg, where that reflection is, I need to leave that white. And normally you use a liquid. Oh, I can't remember what the blooming name of it is now. And I haven't got any. Because what happens is I don't put the lid on properly and it turns to rubber. Masking fluid, that's what it is. I know people who paint are probably thinking, oh my God, this woman is a moron. But I'm not like a professional painter. I just do what I do. Um, yeah, so I haven't got any masking fluid. I The nearest art shop is Port Maddock, uh, Browsers. And I'm not well enough to go over there today. So I'm going to have to make do. You can put a little bit of white in after but it's never as effective. So what would happen is you put a bit of masking tape on there. It's like a rubber solution. And then you peel it off after and you're left with a bright white. So I could have done with that today, but we've just got to make do with what we've got. So now I'm on two tomatoes. Now, obviously when you're a child, you know that tomatoes are red. And when a child paints a tomato, they paint them red. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, all these aren't red. We've got orange, bits of red, bits of dark red. And the thing with it is <clears throat> making them look fluid enough so they're not like really heavy um lumps of red on the page and like I say I do struggle with tomatoes I don't know why but I just do I think it's because I just do too much on them I'm too heavy-handed so this time I'm trying to go in and be light-handed uh, and we'll see how that goes um I always try and challenge myself a little bit with painting because I go back to things that re I struggle with because eventually you 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 do crack it. Now the reason I'm leaving these white bits are 
because I need this reflection. So as you can see, I've left a bit of reflection there. So at the moment, I'm just going in with the background sort of orange colour. And then I'm going to leave and I'll build up the colour so to a little bit more red. And obviously the more you stare at these tomatoes, you can see they aren't actually fully red. Okay, so these are all creased up because obviously they've been roasted. So I need to, one, two, three. Oh yeah, here we go. So I lost where I was then. It's very restful painting and because I'm off work at the moment um, it's nice that I can indulge in doing this and you find that when you do paint or do anything artistic you do tend to lose yourself a little bit into sort of um, I've not put the little oh, apart from when Penny starts barking at other dogs but you tend to lose yourself Penny, she's just letting them know that she's about and she's queen dog. Here we go. So I'm nearly, so I need to leave a bit of, see there, there's that reflection. I need to leave that and leave that out. Like I say, a bit of artis artis artistic license. Penny! Artistic license here. So every time my dog barks outside, she's telling it off. There we are. So that's the beginning of my tomatoes. And I need to somehow get the creases in too, which isn't going to be easy. <clears throat> okay. So... That's another stage. I'm going to move on to my egg yolk, which isn't going to be easy because we imagine egg yolks <coughs> to be yellow. But as you can see, it's yellow and then it's grey. And then obviously I've got pepper on here too. Yeah, I've not picked an easy thing to video. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going on to the top of the egg. Like so. Just to get that warmth on there. Not sure what colour this is. Aqua. Oh my god. And it seems to be a stronger colour there. So that's the beginning of the egg. Now, as you can see with the lights, this white is looking a bit yellow as well. So I'm going to do a very, very light wash. And then what I'll probably do is take with a bit of tissue, <coughs> which I haven't got here. That might do a bit of paper. I'm going to blot out where the reflection is. Oh, your finger. So another stage and now I'm going to go back into the patty. Keep calling it patty. Pate. Oh, I don't know, patty. So as you can see, I've been building up the meat part um, and just adding bits of colour to just add a bit of texture. What I'm going to do, because I've probably done as much as I can because it's very wet now is I'm going to move back to the tomatoes so as you can see I've been building up the red a bit more texture on here and then I've started working on the egg now as you can see around the yolk it almost looks a bit purpley so I've put some excuse me very like sort of gray purple color in and now I'm going to, I'm letting everything dry a bit and then I'm going to go in with the stem, which will sort of bring it all together. <clears throat> and then I'm going to carry on with the pepper dots, um, a bit more 
texture on here and gradually it should pop out of the page. So I'm going in with the stem, quite nerve wracking. So I need to, I've got quite a thin brush and I've got a mixture of sort of greeny, blacky brown because it's not like a pure green. There we go. And then I need to do this part here. So. Okay, then we've got one that comes down here and then it goes into like the little head. We've got one here. And I've got to be careful because it's bleeding into and it's got little swirly bits here. So as you can see, it's starting to bring it it I think the contrast of the colour <coughs> excuse me just gives it it sort of earths it a bit I think. And then we've got like little fuzzy wizzies here. Not the technical term, obviously. Some bits here. And as you can see, it's bleeding a little bit, so I've got to be careful because it's not really dry enough to do this. Not that there, that there. There's a little bit that goes there. And then we've got one that comes round there. And then it's got bits on the top, like so. I have to make that a bit thicker. So there's our stem. So last few bits um, that I'm just finishing up with. Obviously you can see where there's pepper um, and it's gone on where there's still water. So what I'm actually doing is just putting some bits where that's watery. Over here. I like putting freckles on. And if it's a bit sharp, <clears throat> I can go over with a little bit of water. Um, there we go. Runs a bit on the outside, a bit here. A bit on the top. So it's coming along. I'm getting to where probably I'm going to leave the tomatoes because I always overdo them. I'm going to go a bit under here with a bit more shadow. When this is dry, I'll make this a little bit more defined, the spots on there. And we're coming away. You know, it's starting to lift off the page now. The biggest thing is trying not to overdo it. So I'll come back at the end and hopefully I need a bit of shadow on there and look similar to what it looks like on the plate or my version of it. So right at the end now, um, I've just put some more yellow on because it just wasn't popping. I've done the stem. I'm just gonna put little bits of pepper on the top when that's dry and then I'm finished. Finally finished. Um, as best as I can get it anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, this is all to do with producing a book called Forget Me Not Cottage. Um, this one's for Christmas and it's all recipes, craft projects, illustrations and all things cosy. Uh, you can find me on Facebook <clears throat> under Forget Me Not Cottage. Instagram, I'm getting rare with that. Thank you. Bye.